When COVID-19 shunted Britain and my life into lockdown, I disappeared into a wormhole via the archives which nourish my art. Balzac declared that historians are privileged liars and for hundreds of years they've been feeding us a lie using a heteronormative historiography of bigotry and misogyny. Since lockdown, I've kept my link to the real world by the application of a red stain upon my lips and uh, either an ancestral tiara or one created by the artisan velvet eccentric for me. And once I have performed these ministrations and taken my medication, I walk through the mirror into the salon culture of the Baroque in Britain in the 1600s. The plagues of the 1600s were the backdrop to the cultural advances and new ideas of the scientific revolution. Both the plague and the Baroque eroded the barriers of class, gender and sexuality. The salons which fueled the Baroque in Britain were hosted by subversive women in large country houses and attended by the leading LGBTQs of the age. James I of Great Britain and Ireland, the first openly gay monarch that Britain has ever had, unapologetically gay. He was unable to have his coronation ceremony in London because the plague had put the city into lockdown. He set his court up with his eccentric wife, the Dancing Queen, in Wilton House in Salisbury, which was where the most famous salonier of the age, Mary Herbert, Countess of Pembroke, hosted the most liberal salon. Like the plague, she did not recognize barriers of class, gender or sexuality. All that was required was new ideas and fresh art forms. This court included Shakespeare, Francis Bacon, Inigo Jones, Mary Roth, Elizabeth Carey. Many artists like myself in lockdown are finding ourselves communicating more rather than less as we reach out to one another, be it on Zoom or WhatsApp. In effect, we are creating a new line of cultural salons following in the footsteps of the Baroque. Artists and artisans, eccentrics, dandies, dandazettes, and subversive thinkers everywhere were joining together on social media platforms.